Hey everybody, thanks for joining us. I'm sitting here right now just admiring yet another piece of art within the Corvette history. Yeah, the C6ZR1. Yeah, that thing was a rocket. Now if you're on this channel, you love performance cars. More importantly, you love Corvette. Now think about this. What if this was your job? You went to work every day tweaking and tuning, trying to get the most out of Corvette. And to make sure that you're doing the right job, you get in the car and you take it on the track and you push it to the limits to make sure you're doing the right thing. <laughs> that would be considered a, a dream job. And that was the job for Jim Merrow. Retired under C7 generation as the ride and handling engineer for Corvette. As I said the other day, he left us with a living legend and the 2019 ZR1. Now last year I had the opportunity to sit down and talk with Jim, whether you've seen this vlog yet or not, I know you'll enjoy the conversation today with a guy that had the dream job. Here's Jim Merrill. My name is Jim Merrill. I'm the suspension development engineer for the Chevrolet Corvette. And that means I have the best job in the entire world. My grandfather ran moonshine. I'm not sure if you're born with uh, a want to drive fast, but I look back on my childhood. I went to an IndyCar race and when I came around the first lap, I looked at my mom and said, I'm going to do that. And my dad looked at me and he said, no, 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 you're going to college. A lot of the young guys ask me, how do I come up with, to do something like this? You know, hands-on experience, and you have to have a racing background. As we're coming into this really super tight turn, you know, we're going to put on the second gear. And you got to tell yourself, patient, 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 because the minute you start crowding the throttle too much, you're going you're gonna to screw up the entire lap. You gotta be able to tear in the cars. You gotta understand every component of how they work together. These computers or controllers communicate with each other. And all that has to come together in harmony with each other. But there's always the human element. There is no computer that can sit between the steering wheel and the seat and make it all happen. I don't want to say tires are everything, but they're probably the biggest component of whether or not you're going to be a success. You could have a spectacular chassis, everything looks good on paper, you put a jump tire on the car, it's going to drive like junk. If you ever ask any professional driver, have you ever driven the perfect lap? The answer will be 100% of the time, no. No matter how good you drive it, there's always a little bit left on the table. I really like being the Chevrolet guy, walking into a shootout against cars that cost $150,000, $250,000, and we're beating every one of them. Throughout my career at General Motors, I've been in and out of a lot of people's offices. President, vice president, this office is the best. You may not know who this guy is because you always see him when he's on the track with a helmet on. This is the guy behind the helmet. It's Jim Merrill. Jim, thank good you. to meet you. Thank you for having me. And what, I what, always what, say the helmet's my best. What's sign. the official title? I got. I mean, I, I don't know. I know you're retired, retired from General Motors, yeah. but what was the official title with Chevrolet? Uh, vehicle di vehicle dynamics engineer responsible for ride and handling on the Corvette. Okay. From 2004 to 2018. All right. And he, he, you know, you guys have seen the videos that he's been in, driving the car, testing the car. He's working when he's doing that. But one of the videos that will be playing through the conversation Jim and I are having right now, uh, I go right to the ZR1 Nuremberg and the C6 ZR1. And man, I'll tell you what, I watched that video I don't know how many times. And I don't know what turn it was, but you were doing about a buck 82. And you didn't do this with the steering wheel. You were doing, you were turning left and you were going downhill and you make the wrong move in that turn and it's game over when that car, I mean, man, that, that just amazed me. I'm like, I, and I remember watching it back in the day, we're waiting for ZR1 to come out. And I'm like, what did my buddy, I go, did you see that? He just <laughs> turned left going 180 miles. This car's unbelievable. And I was watching your hands and how fast, how fast they moved, but yet how stable they were in that car. I mean, what a great time that was. Yeah, I'll tell you a funny story about that particular turn. 
It's it's called. You know uh, what I'm talking about. Tear garden. It's almost at the end of the lap, and um, for for two weeks, I never lifted there. I mean, it's wide open, flat, and yeah. I and then we talked about staying hyper focused, and and when I when I came through and got into the straightaway, I kind of let my mind wander a bit, uh, and hmm. I had a pretty good idea we were going to be the first car in our 720, and I turned in too early, and I had to blip the throttle. That was a half a second. No kidding. Yeah, if you look at the video, I, I, I have to come off and go back on. First time in two weeks that I had to lift for that turn. Oh and, uh, my gosh. And, and and I didn't I didn't think too much of it until my uh, my data guy came over and said that was a half a second. No kidding. I know there's a couple of times you were in some of the apexes and I thought you got like a lot of apex because yeah. like you swallowed it. Oh, I saw the yeah. hands going. Crazy. Yeah, but you just get moving. Yeah, you kind of go to a different place when you when you turn for you run, run for time. It's 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 uh I don't know how to explain it. It's you just. You go, you go somewhere else, it's not running a lab like anything else. You know, you... Well, for the training that I've had through Chevrolet, and I've been to so many different tracks, uh, I always give a lot of credit to the folks at the Ron Fellow School, Spring Mountain. The first thing they tell you before you even get behind the wheel, and you're alluding to that, that your mind is really got to be focused on the car, yeah. the track. Don't be thinking about anything else. You've got to be 100% you got to be hyper-focused. No, there's no, there's no doubt about it. Yeah. So we're talking about, and that really where I wanted to go with the beginning of this, but I'm just happy just to be talking to Jim, and there's a few things we're going we're gonna to dive into, but talking about being scared on the track. I mean, I would, I'll use the Run Fellow School as an example. You, know you folks that have been there know exactly what I'm talking about. When you get done with your two, three-day session, you're like, yeah, I can do this. And then you do the hot lap with the trainer. <laughs> you're like, okay, I'm horrible. <laughs> this is, and I watch your thing of the nerve. There's no way I could do that. So not thinking when you started driving, but from your professional career, was there ever a moment that, besides what we're talking about where you lost a half a second, but is there a moment that you really felt nervous or you felt scared uh, in, in a performance situation? Never scared. Okay. Um, nervous because like when, you know, GM spends a lot of money for us to go to the Nürburgring and, and it's, you know, we always emphasize that it's, the fast lap is a byproduct of everything you do before that, and it's right. developing the vehicle. So, when Sport Auto drives a car, you know it, it, it performs well. But when it comes down, you know, and, and and you know, up until the C7 ZR1, it was you get one lap wow. per time, and it wasn't you know it was when you uh, it, like I'm not scared. I mean, if you're scared at the mm -hmm. Nurburgring, just leave. It's yeah. it's not. But it was you know when you're sitting in the paddock getting ready to go and the weight of the world is on your shoulders. I remember when I went with the ZR1, Tash said, we've already recorded all the videos. Like when he would do the voiceover, that was all done. I'm like, why'd you tell me that? You know, it's like, I don't need that too. But it, it's just, but that, but once the, you know, that once you get going and you, you know, start putting some heat in the tires and then you just gotta, you know, I have to talk to myself, you know, it's things I don't go through my mind during a development lap or just during industry pool because there's so much traffic, you're just trying to negotiate the track. It says, you know, I'm, as I come up to a turn, I am rehearsing that turn, not to get too far ahead of myself because that's another big mistake, but what you're going to do, you know, where you're going to pick up the throttle, where you're going to be wide open, you know, where, where your line is because there's some idiosyncrasies on the ring that right. you, you got to, you know, it's like, oh, here's the typical line, but if you go out here, there's a little bit of banking, a little bit more grip. So it, that's, it, that's you know, a tough track. It's oh yeah, it's it, it's there's nothing like it in the world. Right. And, um, and so it's 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 it was it, the nerves of just the you know the you know the expectations were over the top. Yeah. And and yeah. but once you get going, um, it all it just goes away, and then you just super hyper focused on hitting your marks. Well, we were talking outside. And you were talking with some of the guys, and we'll tell you what he was doing here today, as we teased about in some previous videos. And it's neat to see you mingle with the customers and current Corvette owners. You were telling the guys that when you get into the car, you may be very familiar with the track, but you know the situation like the ZR1 ring time that we're referencing a lot, that's kind of the famous lap for you, but you know that the cameras are on, all of a sudden everything changes. You kind of tense up just a little bit different and you've got to, you got, it's hard to stay focused because you know the cameras are on. Right, yeah, it's, it's not tensing up, it's just as, you know, if your expectations are it's just it's just another lap, right? It, that's completely wrong. It's you know, even when you're on that front straightaway, 
and you you go down turn one and and it just it hits you and, and it's not it's like subconscious you just yeah everything's different and and that that's when you know, like i say you have to stay hyper focused you have to you know you can't get out of the moment you have to stay in the moment yeah, you're it's in very goal easy mode. <laughs> you're in go mode um and it's like nothing you've ever experienced before even if you had you know a thousand laps if right. you didn't run for an official time um it's 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 all different and i try to tell the new guys coming up i said you think it's just another lap right. but it's not it's a little more be, pressure it's a, a more lot pressure. more pressure yeah all the laps that you've done different tracks is there any track that you really enjoy driving the most well, besides the Nurburgring, yeah, Virginia National Raceway. Really, no VIR. It. Yeah, it's uh, it's got a little bit of everything. Um, it's got you know, like I, I always tell people, those high speed S's are just how big are your, you know what? <laughs> um, but but the five turns leading up to the high speed S's is finesse. You can't, you know, you can't manhandle or you know, you can't brute force the car. Mm -hmm. it, it's finessing the car through those turns in order to maintain your momentum. Right. Uh, to get a shot at the high speed S's, it's got super high straightaways. I think in the in the uh, in the C7 ZR1, we were doing 174, 175 on the back straightaway. Super hard braking, and then you come down the roller coaster. That's that's kind of in between of you know running hard but finessing the car down. So it's got a little bit of everything, and it's just a, spe it's a spectacular track. Oh man! Well, I've told you guys many times over when you buy a new car from me, please take you know just take. Try and take your ownership experience to another level, to tracking stuff that Jim has done and is still doing for a living. And that's at the Ron Fellow Spring Mountain School. And many times, uh, I've told this story to you guys too, the first time I ever went was for the C6 uh, ZR1. Mm -hmm. Drove out there, had a great time. I was a Chevrolet uh, sponsored event. They picked me up, drove me from Vegas to the thing, drive for three days, take me back to the, to the thing in Vegas. I fly back to Cleveland, so it's, four or five days before I'm back in a civilian car. And I called Rick Malone and he goes, hey, what'd you think of the course? I said, wow, you guys are fantastic. I learned so much. I said, but there's a huge problem. You really screwed something up. He goes, what do we do? And I said, well, what you did was is you didn't teach me how to drive like a civilian because I was not disconnected from the track. I got into my Suburban leaving the Cleveland airport. <laughs> we started, started driving like an idiot. And it's just like, <laughs> I was still in go mode. It was crazy. So. For what you do at, at a much higher level than any of us would ever do, how do you disconnect and go from the track to traffic? I, I, people, yeah, it's one of the most common questions they ask my wife. How, well, how does he drive? <laughs> and, and you know, and I blow him away. Six miles an hour, cruise control on. Listen to a podcast. Listen to music. Yeah. I am pretty mundane on the public road. Okay. Um, it's be, it's because I think it's because I I've gotten so much track time i've got you know sure. i think i'm at thirty-five thousand laps um and you know close to where we're at is some of the best roads in the country okay at, uh, south of codwell ohio and um and and the autobahn i mean when you get to do 214 miles an hour on a highway right you know it's like you know oh wow i'm going 95 here and i just you know it, there's no reason to <laughs> to you know get that crazy on and off ramps that's a different story but other than that i I just soon not get a ticket. Yeah, so I know what you mean I, about I, I, on off ramps. My wife yeah. gets mad at me. She goes, "You're gonna drive every vehicle like a Corvette." And yeah, I said, "Sorry, I'm just. If, it's the on ramp. It's kind of that if, thing. If you there's know? a place you do it. That's where you do it. <laughs> right, right, absolutely. There's a couple of shots uh, that you've had, and I think this was at the ring where all four tires were off the ground, man. Yeah. What the heck is that like? You're, I mean, you're flying, dude. Well, Literally flying. The beauty of magnetic ride is that is that you know well. It was before the, uh, they call it um, fluke plots, uh, um, it's, it's a reference to uh, flyover or something like that, but um, before the GTR, there was a GTR in a, in a race that went into the crowd there, and, and it's kind of like, yeah, you know, it, he, just, he just didn't, he went too fast, and, right. and even though, and, and before they, then they, they made the radius a lot bigger, coming up that hill and if you just come up fast enough you will go into the crowd again oh, but um before they did that it was you know a sharper edge and especially in the um the c6 all the c6s and then the c7 z51 before they, it was it was hang time it was pretty cool but you know the car would get up and then just it would just squat and you just yeah, that's the picture I'm talking open. about. You were, yeah. the, you were the blue Z51. Yeah, yeah. It was yeah. Just and dude, you, were, you hadn't been that yeah, far no, off it was, the ground. Yeah, it was good, <laughs> but you just let the car lands. You know, it doesn't oscillate, just lands, and away you go. That was a tribute to the great frame structure of the car. Frame structure and, and magnetic, magnetic ride. So you've been in a lot of different Corvettes. Do you have a favorite 
Corvette per yeah, se. Oh yeah, no question. C7 ZR1. No kidding. Yeah, you know, even though we didn't, um, you know, we had we had a conversation before. Even though we didn't, uh, you know, achieve our objective, um, I think a lot of people now know understand the story. Um, that car is it's kind of like the everything I've learned over 30 years in 15 and Corvette all came together in that car, and um, it it's it's no question it's a sub seven car, guarantee it. Mm -hmm. um, and um, it, I mean it, it's got a, it's a great daily driver, yes. tourist sport, you know. Mm -hmm. it, but you know it, it does exactly what it's supposed to do. It does it well. Yes. And, and on the track, it's a beast, and it's just you know, all you do is flip the switch. Now, is there a reason that we didn't, and I may not be privy to that story, but is there a reason we never got, I know we got segmented times, but yeah. we never got a full oh, we, Jim Merrow lap time yeah. in there? Is, well, we, it, got, we got full times. Um, we got full times in all the C7s, actually. Okay. Um, and the ZR1, you know, we've gone, you know, car, uh, Road and Track had a really good article. Um, I, I wanted to you know, elaborate more on the circumstances that led up to the 704. Um, but they were limited to 1,700 words, uh, and they did a great job portraying it. But it was, you know, it was that day we were just on that day in traffic. We were segmenting 702, just an eight laps. Right. And I did a 706 with traffic, and um, and I, the segment time for just a little over a week was 657. Wow. And I and I always hit the segments. I you know when the industry pool segments, I never missed them. And then an hour before we were to run, they told us you wouldn't get a warm-up lap. Um, I know you got you got to deal with some local issues and traffic and, tra and actual having yeah, clear had, track time. Yeah, they were they were um, you know they had this two-hour slot for all the manufacturers to run for time. And there was a bunch of cars on the track at once. Although we didn't know they spaced us out, which kind of hurt me because the little heat I did get into the tires, which was like 120 degrees, which you would get going next door for a six-pack. Right. Um, uh, you know, was gone. I had nine tenths of a mile in three turns before I started the lap, and I knew, you know, I could, I could. I was the thing I do watch is the tire pressures, and then, you know, we went out 26 psi cold, and you know, I think they might have been 26, you know, just a, a bit higher. Wow. And I knew, but you know, I kind of held on to it um, for as long as I could. And, and, and heat does get into the tires. The problem is when you, I, I call it shock em or sledgehammer heat into the tires. Instead of just bringing them up with uh, normal loading, and, and now you're bringing them up with high slip angles. You're just, you know, understeering, oversteering, and just creating these huge slip angles and generating heat that way. It's, it, it's inefficient. It, you, it doesn't bring the tire up the way it wants to be brought up. And right. so, uh, you know, the car that was, you know, the car that was a rock star an hour before was just, you know, it was barely drivable, but I, I didn't quit, man. I went after it, you know, and it was I guess, one of the best labs I've ever done. No kidding. Yeah. The ZR1. See, yeah. I told you guys that car was a monster and it was a rock star. We're talking with Jim Merrill, retired engineer from General Motors. And it's not like he became Johnny Carson and disappeared. He's still now, not with the helmet on, not behind the scenes, he's in front of you guys. And you're just coming off your first Corvettes at Carlisle event. Mm -hmm. And it's neat to see that you're not hiding in the woods fishing, which is fine to do once in a while, but you're yeah. still out there, man. So how was that experience at Corvettes at Carlisle? Uh, unbelievable. It, it was, um, yeah, I, I, I've never I've never been there. I've always wanted to go, but you know, we, we you know, with, with the amount of work and boating, we we're in the boats. Okay. It just, August was a tough time. Yeah. Um, until we started the business, and 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 we were invited by um, by the guys there to come and do a couple of seminars and and, and update some cars, and w we didn't know what to expect, and we were completely blown away. First of all, by the number of cars. Second of all, how cool everybody is. Super friendly, you know, willing to talk to you, stopping by, you know, and say, I don't have a C6, but you know, tell me about this, and you know, I just love talking to all the, you know, the community is so tight. Um, Everybody gets along. Just, just great people, man. Yeah. Every, every, every day we met. It's instant family, man. Instant family. I agree, hundred percent. It really is. So you're still active uh, within the Corvette community. What we've been doing today, a couple of guys were out front, and you may have saw some of the earlier footage. Uh, you were doing a reflash of the C6 magnetic ride control. So mm -hmm. what exactly were you doing for those guys? Well, um, we'll step back to the um, C7 ZR1. Okay. When I said that, you know, that that's where it all came together. I, you know. Even even everything I had, we had implemented up with magnetic ride, 
mm-hmm. a few years, like maybe 2017, I, I, I decided to strip it, because there's so many ways to attack it, I decided to strip it down and bring it, build it back up with way to myself that made more sense. And um, it all came together with the C7 ZR1. Um, and it was so good, it was such an improvement. Like when I would go drive a Z06 versus a ZR1, I said, I got to return the ZL6s, I got to return. I retuned everything um, back to Z51 for 2019, and, and they, all those calibrations were released. After that, I talked to the director of SPO. I said, you know what, it's such a big improvement that there's no reason we can't make this available to anybody who owns a C7. It, it's just, it's just a, a reprogramming. And they put a team together and they did it. Um, so anybody who uh, who has a 2014, if you have a 2014 Z51 and you want the 2019 Cal, you, you bring it to a Chevy dealership and they can put it in there for you. So I retired and then I started thinking, well, what about the C6 guys? You know, mm-hmm. I, I, cause I, cause I, you know the, the calibrations I'm tuning, I'm replacing what I tuned 12 years ago. And I remember, you know, it's like it's like any process. The more you do it, the better you get. Sure. And then with that, you know, and it, and it was always getting better. But then, you know, the the tail of that curve came up when I when I did the 2019 cars. So I went out and bought a Grand Sport and started messing with it. I'm like, holy, holy crap! This is, you know, if the C7 came up here, the C6, you know, was down here because, you know, over you know over the life of the C6, and then you jump to C7, things get better. Right. So the you know the amount of improvement this that car had was. It was was bigger than what the C7s had, or, or, or close to it, and um, and so we just decided to embark on this little adventure, you know, trying to upgrade cars, and and so far we've been, you know, real fortunate, you know, no one's, everybody's been happy, you know, I, I offer a full money back. This is just as zero risk to you. You can, you know, and that, and that I actually tried to get GM to do that, and it would with the C7s. <laughs> you know, I, no one's gonna bring a car back, you know, and right. Uh, and uh, unless the flash got messed up, which I'm sure has happened, yeah. but um, but you know, I, I, you know, I, just, I offer them running back guarantee, um, and um, and so far, you know, of all the cars we flash, haven't had one disappointed customer. Well, I saw at Carlisle one of the guys, Jason in Maryland, your super. You remember the supersonic ZR1? I yeah. think he just did. Yeah. He's already posting rave reviews and how much of a difference it makes, and it is instantaneous. I mean, yep. a lot of you guys that have had the upgrade, and I recommended it a long time ago because I felt the difference in the calibrations of the mm-hmm. 19. And it took me a minute when I'm driving. I'm like, wait a minute, you know, I was going yeah. over a freeway, and I was getting. I'm like, wait a minute, this mm-hmm. feels really good. I'm like, hey, this is a real deal. And you guys did the upgrade. And you were telling me, you said, yeah, wow, what a huge difference. But I think of the C6s you were doing today. I noticed that you were asking the guys what they were going to do with the car so you actually could kind of customize that sport mode for them right to yeah. the way that they're going to drive it. yeah well yeah, i've done a, a a tour a new tour new sport which is like the c7 mm-hmm. tour and sport because the c6 was turn tuned um tour track it says turn sport but that sport mode is a track mode okay and we had to have something in there for the track guys sure so um so yeah i realized that 95 percent of people don't track their car so I said I want to do I want to give them a, a tour in a sport that you know that I, I tuned it exactly the way I tuned the C7s tour in sport, but then because I you know I don't I can't have access to all these cars on a racetrack, but I also sure. know there's a lot of guys out there who like the car tied down just because they like the car tied down. So I decided to do a super sport mode, which is like a, a 30% bump in global damping um for uh from sport so they you know you can do a tour in the super sport mode mm-hmm. um and um and you know and, and the more i thought about it I, you know some of the guys can i can i use this on the track and and you know i got a couple of guys who are going to try it because uh, i'll digress a second back to the c7 zr1 we were at willow springs uh, with the c7 zr1 and i was running just tanks of fuel i mean we were running an endurance test and all day long, you know, and I finally, you know, I said, I'm going to run this tank in sport. Just to see what it's like, and it was pretty good. Hmm. You know, it wasn't as good as track, but it was pretty good. And so, you know, that? so now I'm digressing. I'm saying, you know, if, and I, I tell them, I said, you know, you know, I, I think super sport, because super sport is, uh, you know, it's it's what, sport is what I would have done in the C7. Okay. Super sport's a bump up from that. And, um, and so we have a couple of guys out there, you know, I'm not saying this is a track mode, but I'm sure. saying... You know, based on your, you know, how how well, good of a driver you are, sure, this may suit your needs, and it's a great street mode. Just even even in super sport, car the impacts are better, the uh, the isolation, you know, the car is more balanced. So, 
So there's quite a few guys. Actually, uh, Matt here took to the Tour Super Sports. So. Yeah, I heard him talking about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, he's pretty That's pretty cool. It, yeah. Oh, that's just neat. So you've got a Facebook page. What is your Facebook page? Uh, it's Jim Merrill Vehicle Dynamics, LLC. Okay, and are you on Instagram or any of that kind of stuff? Uh, no, i got a website. Okay, um, what's the website? JimMerrill.com. Perfect. And if anyone wants to get a hold of me, I'm Jim at JimMerrill.com. Oh, you got to so, like that. Um, and uh, give a shout-out to my buddy Cyril Pappy who did my – I was going to try to do the website myself. Um, and this guy stepped up, uh, you know, just met him through Facebook. You know, yeah. it, it's not, this is how good the Corvette community is. I have never done Facebook before I started this in April. And uh, I know, I just saw you all of a sudden popped out and said, hey, look, Jim, Jim's on Facebook. Yeah, this is great. and, and I, I, you know, people, you got to go Facebook, you got to go social media. And, and I think one of my first posts was, bear with me, I, I, I'm not sure I know what I'm doing. And that's all I had to say. And the Corvette community came out of the woodwork, you know, guiding me through this, this, uh, this phenomenon that I've never experienced before and, and teaching me how to market it and you know and, yeah. and you know there's the guy named Ross from uh, um, Wisconsin has been helping with the marketing guys out in California Salim he's got a YouTube channel too um, and um, and then Cyril came up and said no you're not doing your own website let me do it for you <laughs> so it was great great yeah. typical typical core of people man they're awesome you're going to continue to travel around and do this uh c6 reflash any other places that people can see you going forward i know you're planning to go to the caravan right now yeah i, I think we'll, you know we got interest all over the country and i'm you know i'm trying to uh figure out the logistics on um how we're going to satisfy we want to get everybody with this calibration because yeah. i know once we get the some traction all over the country, then I think it'll it'll kind of snowball. Um, I think one, you know, I got there's two two options. One's a immediate, maybe one's down the road, and and you know we, we're th we're talking about doing a lap of America. You know, we like okay. a road trip, and uh, that's cool. And 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 maybe right after the first of the year, and, and just you know just getting everybody who wants you know the um, the uh, upgrade and, and and is figuring out you know okay what major metropolitan areas do I got to go to and kind sure. of have everybody come up right and then at long term you know I can't do that all the time so long term I'm thinking about getting a network of just installers um, you know somebody who can install the controller because we can I can I can flash the controller from home okay send it to a, an installer and it's it's less than an hour of labor so you know if we're going to do a trip, and then another year we'll do another one. Mm -hmm. and you want it now? And, you know, it's it's just, you know it'll be the same price, and then you know, probably 120, 130 bucks to have somebody put it in for you. Sure, so you can have it. So that's it's just the Carlisle and the caravan have just been consuming all my time. I haven't even had time to right. try to get this network together. But I, you know, we're thinking long term. You know, and that's cool. See what happens. All right, now, and of course, in the last part of the conversation, like, you haven't said anything about C8. I am. Hang on a second. All right, so let's talk about C8 Corvette. <laughs> uh, and so I, <laughs> he's like, here it comes. <laughs> Easy, loose, having fun, man. Yeah. Uh, I'm just curious, how much of the C8 were you involved in uh, be before you retired? Very little. The, uh, the um, it, you know, you probably saw me get kicked around pretty hard uh, based on a podcast that I did. Um, and when I typed my response and, and basically was just stating that, you know, early on, um, I was part of a, a group of people who, who drove, you know, this was before, you know, there was, I don't know, I'm not sure the lines on paper. I mean, there was, mm -hmm. it was very early on and we wanted to get a taste of what's out there. And, um, and we just, we had to, we did this whole round robin of what was considered the, you know, the best mid engine cars. Um, and my opinion from walking away from that, and it was just a racetrack, and, and, and you know, public roads was sure. Was I think we have to out engineer them. Mm -hmm. you know, that's the way I felt, and and but if you you know the timing of the C8 and the C7 ZR1 mm -hmm. was I mean was pretty close. So yes. you know I, you can't do both cars, and and I I mean no one was taking the ZR1 from me. So um, so I you know and I knew I was going to retire. I knew right. you know so there was no reason for me to. You know, get in the middle of the C8, and but the the engineers, I, I know, I know all of them. They're awesome. Mm -hmm. They're a great group of guys, super smart. And you know, I've watched, I I, I watched the videos of uh, since they've revealed it, yes. and I think that they out engineered the competition. I think this car is going to be really. I think it'll be better than the C7. You never got a chance to drive it. Never had a chance to drive it. Now I got to start kissing some butts. See you, see you, <laughs> see you get it. But but no, I, there's no question in my mind that it will, it will. I mean. If you don't 
outperform the car you replace and then you go out of business. Sure. And I, am, I have no doubt that the team did a great job in the C8 and they'll continue to do so and it, it'll be, you know, it'll meet expectations. Yeah, I think I think it's amazing just as I pick up more and more and more stuff and I love hearing Taj talk about the car oh, yeah. because he makes it so human and so relatable and it really is incredible how far that car's oh, gone. Yeah. Yep. And, and like he said just this past weekend at Carlisle, they're not even doing retail cars yet. These are still experimental cars. Right. And has exceeded all their expectations. Yep. So, uh, yeah, we're in for a real bright future yep. for Corvette. Now, no question about it. Speaking of future, who took your position at Chevrolet? That yeah, I would. You, uh, did, is, well, there, is there one guy, or they got a team? No, of guys I, I have three, three guys. Okay, so three guys replaced but, you. But I, <laughs> and I got I got to pick two of them. Okay, uh, it was early on, but I, I, at a out of respect for, I'm going to let the platform, um, you know, and, you know, it, I don't I don't want to. Yeah, I don't want to step out of bounds here. I'm gonna stay in my uh, lane. Absolutely, and I'm no, sure that's, that's that you know, when, you know, it, no. when names, you know, it, I think it's up to the to Taj and uh, and Harlan and okay. you know if they want to, you know, it's, when they want to present the team, I'm sure that they'll do it. So. All right, then let me ask you this then: Are you a better driver than them? Uh, no, no, they got. Oh they, come on! I'm waiting for Jim to say, "Oh yeah." No, no, everybody, every <laughs> you know these you know these guys are super fast. They got you yeah. know the guys. You know, there's yeah, you know, there's guys who come up and kind of get trained on the job, who end up being really fast, and there's guys who come up who've raced cars, mm -hmm. and we have several of them working on the Corvette right now, um, who were super fast before they um, they they started working on Corvette. I have no question that that they'll take it. You know, that, that, that as far as you know, engineers and lap times, nothing's lost. Wow, that's great. All right, one last uh, one last thing, and then we're going to have Jim sign some posters that you guys have an opportunity to win on the channel, and I appreciate you taking the time to do well, that. My pleasure. Uh, this is just a blast talking with you. Sure. We, and you've referenced it earlier, and I've talked about it a lot on my channel, that people are buying this Corvette. It is a sports car in its truest sense, but the bulk of the people buying the car are not race car drivers. Right. So what would you say to the client that's watching right now that gets that car they get caught up in the moment watching your videos and okay I'm gonna I'm going to do this little track thing but to the novice to the guy that's just gonna do a weekend track thing what, what would you suggest to them what would be good advice for them getting started and they're not going to do it in a competition level right. or certainly at the level that, that, that you've done no it, it, if you're a novice um, and you're doing there's wherever you go there's gonna be an instructor okay. and to go out on a racetrack without an instructor's guidance is foolish. You, you know, it's like you can play video games. You, when you get in and you start feeling things, um, and, and if you're just, you know, you, you'll be kind of floundering around by yourself, you get sit next to an instructor and, and let him take some laps, let him sit next to you, take some laps. You know, the, the learning curve will be, the learning curve will be exponential. You will learn so much faster um, than if you just go out and try to figure it out on your own. Mm -hmm. So I mean, you know, and then yeah, if you as you go, yeah, just, that's for the novice, and you, sure. you kind of get up and then you start talking about data and right. you know maybe tweaking the car to your driving style. But you know, to the pure novice, you know, to just you know, it, so if there's somebody willing to help you, let them help you. Uh, great advice. Great advice. My pleasure. Wonderful talking to you. Jim. Thank you so Fantastic. much for having me. I, I really well, appreciate it. Well, I'll definitely be seeing you at some Corbett events because I travel yeah. the country too. Great. And thank you for all the hard work that you've done and the great successes that you've you've provided for Corvette. Uh, I think it's just incredible. And being able to talk to you now after watching these uh, videos for so long, this is really this is a I thrill feel the same for me, way guys. About you. Oh, you, come you on, no, not at all. All the YouTube all. video, no, all those YouTube fantastic. Uh, listeners. But it, it's just a it, it's. Yeah, I thought I'd be out of it, but it's, you know, Corvette community just kind of, you kind of want to stay in it. And, and I, every time we do, Terry and I do something, you know, the caravan and, and, and it's going to be at Carlisle. It's just, you make more friends and sure. you want to stay in it. So it's, well, it becomes a true it's way a of life. Yeah, it's a way absolutely. of life. Yeah. You bet. No That's fantastic. About it. What I wish I really could have shared was the hour conversation we had after the camera turned off. Great stories. Saw some stuff that maybe people will never see. Jim, thanks for that. I guess I can sum up the entire interview with something Jim said to me just before we left him that afternoon. He says, you know, even though I'm retired, he goes, I still consider myself an ambassador for Corvette. Yes, sir, you certainly are. Thank you again, Jim. It was truly an honor to sit with you. Mm -hmm.